My name is Mr. Ishengoma, and I'll be your host today's class. We are looking at circle theorems. We have previously looked at the uh, basic important law. Then we continued and we looked at what I call the first law, second law, and uh, the third law. Today we are looking at the remaining laws. Start with we are looking at the angle in the semicircle is a right angle. The angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So we mean whenever you have a semicircle like this, yeah. So a semicircle is described by a diameter because diameter cuts a circle into two equal parts. So when you have a semicircle, you can have an angle like that from the from this corner and from that corner so this law basically says if you have a semicircle and then you have that kind of angle touching the circumference inside the semicircle the law says uh, this angle will always be 90 degrees so this means if you look at this situation here i have a circle but from a circle, I have a diameter. When you look at this diameter here, you will realize that it has cut the circle into two equal parts. So these two equal parts make this a semicircle, and it makes the law to apply that this corner touching the circumference will always be the right angle. Basically, when you look at number two here, you realize the same story. Semicircle there, so this is a right angle. And the same to this kind of triangle, this will be right angle. So the law will basically tell us that since this is a triangle and this is a right angle, if I have this angle as a certain value and I have this angle as a certain value, this will mean to me that x plus y plus 90 because right angle means 90 will always be equal to 180 given the fact that the interior angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees and this furthermore will mean that x plus y is equal to is equal to 90 y because this 90 uh, will reduce the 180 degrees example of the questions when you look at this question here Definitely, this is a diameter because of the center. Here, we are not given anything, but based on the law we have just seen, uh, which says the angle in the semicircle is a right angle. So basically, we shall say this is a right angle. When this is a right angle, the whole three have to give us 180 degrees. And if all three have to give us 180 degrees, meaning this one and this one will add up to will add up to 90 because the other 90 is there and this will be another 90. So when you divide by two, we get X to be 40, 45 degrees. Number two, when you look at number two here, this will be 90. Why? Because of the law which says angle in the semicircle is a right angle. So if this is 90, meaning X plus two X, we get three X. So that means our three X will be equal to the other remaining 90. And then when you divide by three, we get our x as m. We get our x as 30. Example three here, question three. Again, if this is a semicircle, this is a diameter, the law says this one will be 90. So if this is 90, meaning 3x is equal to 90. And then when you divide by three, we get our x as a, as a 30. So basically, that's how we apply this law in some of the questions. Let's look at the next, the next law. There we go. This law says the angle, the angle between a tangent and the radius drawn to the point of contact is 90. The angle between a tangent and a radius drawn to a point of contact is 90. 
So basically this means if I have a radius and then I have a tangent and these two are meeting at a certain point there on the circumference, the law says this whole angle will be, will be 90 degrees. So number two is further saying if there is a diameter, diameter shows two radiuses. So if I have a radius and two, this will be 90. Also this side will be, will be 90. That's how, our, that's how our law is explaining to us. Number three is giving us an example direct. This is our radius because we have center O here. And then this is our tangent. They are touching at that position. So if they are touching at that position, the law means this corner is 90. So if this corner is 90, basically 50 and X will have to another 90 because this will be a triangle. This is a triangle. This corner is 90. So X plus 50, I will get 90. And then when I take 50 this side, 90 minus 50, uh, basically our X will be, will be 40. You see? how we could answer some questions based on the law. So here we go. We are given 70 and here we're given X. But the law says radius in contact with tangent, they form 90 degrees. So this means 90 minus 70 is 20. So basically our X will be 20. This X will be 20. If this x is 20, also this corner will be 20, basing on the uh, rule, basic rule whereby radius and radius form a sources triangle. So if this is 20, also this is 20. So find y. Remember, y plus 20 plus 20, I should get 180 because it's a triangle. This is a triangle here. And this is 40. So 180 minus 40, our y will be 140, 140 degrees. Okay, let's look at uh, question two. Question two also brings the law that this is 90 degrees. And if this is 90 degrees, means x plus 2x, you get 3x. So 3x will be equal to the remaining 90. So this is 180, take away 90. Uh -huh, we divide by 3 and our x will be 30. If that x is 30, we have the second part here to find y. If you look at this second part for y, you'd realize that also this arm here is 90. Then 70 and y and 90 will make 180. But 180 take away this 90, meaning 70 plus y should give me 90. So y will be 20 because 90 minus 70, you will get will be 20. Okay, example three. If you check properly here, the basic law, the first bit law previously we have looked, angle in a semicircle is 90. Angle in a semicircle is 90 because this is diameter. <clears throat> and if that is diameter, you'd realize that this corner, which is not marked here, Definitely, the, the law says it will be a right angle. Now, if this is 60, this will be 30 because 60 and 30 will make the other, the other 90. But now we have a tangent here and we have a radius. Tangent and radius are from 90. So that means 30 plus x, I will get 90. So 30 plus x, I'll get 90. That says that our x will be will be 16 degrees. That is how we can do a bit of the questions to um, practice the law. So now let's go to the next. Let's go to the next law. There we go. The next law says the next law says from a point outside. A circle from the point outside the circle. Just two tangents to the circle may be drawn and they are of equal length. 
they are of equal length. The law is they will always be equal. The two tangents which are touching outside the circle, they will always be equal length. That is from the point where they're touching the circle to the point where they're meeting. From the point where they're touching the circle to the point where they're meeting. So basically, from there up to here, if this distance is A, and from here to there, if this distance is B, the law says the distance A is always equal to the distance B. The distance A is always equal to the distance C, distance B. So if we are to explain it more here, number two, if you look properly, where these two tangents, they're touching the circle, now I have formed the triangle. Look it, where they're touching the circle. But remember, the law says from here till here is equal with from here till there. So this means this line is equal to that line. But by forming a triangle, it means this corner will always be equal to that corner. And that basically tells us this will be like a side, uh, sorry, uh, a isosceles triangle. Now, furthermore, explain the first part. Remember, previously we said this is radius, radius and tangent before we say they make 90, right? And now also, this is another radius. And then we say radius of 90. So if you look closely, now we have formed a four-sided a four shape, which is not inside the circle. No, 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 here. So I have marked the four corners, and that is a quadrilateral. And we know a quadrilateral, we looked at this law where n minus 2 times 180, we get the uh, interior angle sum. So interior angle sum of a quadrilateral is 360. So this angle here and this angle here complete the four corners. But this being 90, this being 90, total is 180. Right? So if total is 180, you know 360 is equal to 180 plus 180, we get 360. So if this corner is 180, this plus this is 180. So this tells us that if I have at the center of the circle and a point outside, it means these two also will add to 180. Because this is 90 degrees and this one is 90 degrees by the previous law. So meaning this and this, if I call like this one x, and this one y. Also, it means that x and y, x plus y, I should get 180 degrees. Why? Because 180 plus 180, it takes me to 360 since the quadrato is 360 degrees. Okay, so let's look at a few examples down here. There we go. So since we said, if we have isosceles, isosceles triangle, since this line is equal to this line, right? It means this angle there is equal to that angle there. So if this is X, so definitely this one will be X. So this will mean X plus X plus 15 is equal to 180 degrees because this is a triangle. And interior angle sum of the triangle is 180 degrees. So 2X is equal to 180 minus 50, I get 130. So 130, I'll divide by two. 130, I divide by two. So it means my X now will be 60, 65 degrees. So that's how we apply the law. Number two, example number two. If you look closely, here, this is our radius, and this is our radius. Okay, so remember, this is 90. This is 90, and this is a, a four-sided shape, right? A four-sided shape will add to 360. Four-sided shape will add to 360. So this and this will always add to 180. This and that will always add to 180 degrees. So let's say 4x, 4x, Okay. Yes, somebody is raising hands. Let me read you a chat. 4x. Okay. 
So, here we go. Okay, so we continue. So this and this here will make 180 degrees. This and this will make uh, 180 degrees. So 4x plus x is equal to 180 degrees. So 5x will be equal to 180, 180 degrees. And then divide by 5, divide by 5, we shall get our x as 36, 36 degrees. So let's look at the final, the final law. There we go. The theory says the alternate segment theory, the alternate segment theory. Now, this theory, alternate segment theory, basically shows us that when we have a triangle, when we have triangle, when we have a triangle, When you have a triangle and all the corners are touching the circumference there there and there all the corners are touching the triangle there there and there that the angle outside the angle outside is always equal to the inside far angle the angle outside is always equal to the inside star angle. So if this inside, if this inside far angle, if this inside far angle is equal to this one, so basically if this is 50, also that one, what one is 50. So how that's how the law is. Okay, the next one here. If I have this angle of resistance here, because this is a tangent and this is the corner of one circle, if this one is let's say um, 70, the law says even this other far angle will be 70 degrees. Even this far angle will be 70 degrees. So here, if I combine the two, if I say this one, this one is equal because this side outside, from tangent till uh, one side of the triangle is equal to far angle, let's say that on 70. And we said before, this side here, if this is 50, even the far one will be, will be 50, right? So basically you can see the remaining one here could be like 60. So this is the theory, which is our final theory. So back to the summary. Remember when we began this, we said we have the first basic law here, as you can see it, that if you have a triangle, this radius and this radius is equal, so this one and this one will be equal. Then we also explained here that if you have a chord and you have a radius meeting at right angle, it cuts the chord into two equal parts. That was our first one. Okay, then we went to the second one, we said, Angles for angles subtended in the by the same arc in the same segment, they're always equal. Angles subtended by the same arc in the same segment, they're always equal. So meaning those two angles must be touching the circumference. We went to the other law, we said angle at the center is twice angle at circumference. Angle subtended at the center is twice the angle subtended at the circumference. That's the reason. Then we looked at the fourth law here. We said opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180. Then today we said angle in the semicircle is a right angle angle in the semicircle is a right angle. Then we went on and we said radius in contact with a tangent from a right angle. Radius in contact with the tangent from a right angle. 
Then we went to the seventh one where we said radia, that means sorry, a tangent, they can only be drawn two tangents, which will be in contact. So those tangents will always have equal length. Then I explained more that if you make a triangle, you get isosceles triangle like that. Or I explained again, if you uh, join from the center, you will get this corner 90 because of the previous law, this corner 90 because of the previous law, and then this one and this one. So total will be 360. 360 minus 90 and 90 get 180. So A and B will add to it. And finally, we have just looked at the last law here, which says uh, alternate segment theory, which states if you have got a triangle with all the three corners touching the circumference, the angle from the uh, triangle till the tangent is equal to the far inside angle. The angle from the triangle to the tangent is equal to the far inside inside angle. And that is how we deal with these circle theorems. And this is the summary of all the circle theorems. Thank you.